Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. I want to thank you for checking out my video. I had several questions. I did like a mic weekend a couple weeks ago, and there was a flurry of questions about microphones that came in. And I must admit, I truly enjoy talking about gear. My channel is mostly focused on singing instruction, but given the opportunity to talk about microphones or preamps or digital audio workstations, also known as DAWs, uh, I will not pass up on it. So the question that I'm going to address in this video regarded the explanation of cardioid, hypercardioid. Uh, it was a discussion about the polar patterns that microphones have. Uh, and I'm going to include in that their uses because of, there was another question talking about how microphones get used. And so I'm going to talk about the polar patterns for microphones in this. I'm going to use my trusty AKG 414 uh, as a demonstration model here because it makes it, it's, I'll show you and explain it. It'll all be very, very clear why I'm using this microphone uh, in just a moment. I want to thank you if you've chosen to subscribe. If you haven't yet, I hope that you'll consider doing so now. Uh, there's lots of other ways you can support the channel. Those are in the description. So first and foremost is to take a look up close and personal with the AKG 414. Now, never mind, it says number 32 Turindo Beijing 98. Uh, I got this mic used, and it was used in the Beijing production of Turindo. So here it is. Um, and uh, you can ignore that. That's not going to be on your 414 if you get one. Now, right there under ULS, there's a switch. It's a four way switch. And it's got four little symbols underneath it. I'm going to go through each one of those symbols one at a time as I demonstrate the actual pickup patterns for the microphone. On the reverse side of the microphone, you've got a little made in Austria and a couple other patterns. I'm going to explain those right now because those are a bit simpler. Um, on the left hand side, you have 0, minus 10, minus 20 dB. That's a pad. So you could roll 20 or 10 decibels of volume off this microphone right at the source. So like, let's say you were putting this in front of a guitar cabinet or a particularly loud vocalist or acoustic guitar or something like that. Um, if it's really, really close, you could enact that pad to get a little bit off um, if it were clipping or something like that. And then you have on the right hand side, <clears throat> this hertz and it has a zero, um, high pass filter 75 or 150. So what this does is wherever you put that switch, it creates a filter and it weeds out anything below that number of Hertz. So right now it's set to zero and it's not doing anything. If you put it to 75, everything below 75 Hertz would be attenuated quite drastically. This is really good if there's like, a, if it's a very rumbly room or if bass frequencies are collecting things like that, um, that can be really very helpful in terms of saving you time later on when you're mixing. 150 does the same thing. It's just a higher, uh, higher point where the microphone starts to take action. So it actually weeds out even more stuff. Since it's 150 hertz and below, it's gonna have that filter on everything below 150 hertz. It's a high pass filter. It lets higher stuff pass on by. The microphone, I'm gonna switch over here. I'm gonna mute my lav mic and I'm gonna engage this mic and I'm gonna show you what the microphone is like in a cardioid pickup pattern. Now a cardioid pickup pattern um, here is a crude drawing of a cardioid pickup pattern. It looks kind of billowy. And what it does is, is the polar pattern is telling you how the microphone is going to respond to sound that is coming at it. In other words, when you're addressing the microphone directly on, and a 414 is a side address mic, so we address it from the side, not towards the, the tippy top of it, right? We're addressing the side of it. That's how we address it. Um, and it's gonna reject things that are on the sides of it. So let's switch mics. And now you're hearing me through the 414. So when I speak to it and I address it directly here, talking to the side, it's gonna pick me up quite clearly. Now, if I start to move around it, 
then it's going to reject more and more. Now I'm still standing quite close to it, so you'll only kind of hear a little bit of that. You'll still hear me, of course, but I can see from the VU meter over there on Reaper, it's rejecting more and more. And when I get all the way around the back, it's rejecting quite a bit. And as I come back to the front, you hear me more and more, and it would do the same thing if I went around the other side. That's your cardioid pickup pattern. It's a, it, it, it has some rejection, but cardioid is fairly a fairly wide pattern in general. It picks up a lot of the surrounding things. Now, a narrower pattern or a tighter polar pattern is a hyper or super, super or hyper cardioid patterns. Now, I'm gonna switch this over to that and then we'll see how that interacts with my voice. This is the hypercardioid pattern on the 414. And here, if I'm addressing it again directly, you'll hear me quite well. Now, it should start to reject me much more aggressively as I move around the sides. With hypercardioid patterns too, there's sometimes a bit of a peak at 180 degrees, so I'll come around the back and see what we get. Still seems like it's doing a pretty good job of cutting me back. And as I come back around the front, I'm gonna keep on getting a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more until I'm back and fully in the polar pattern of the microphone. The next symbol is a circle. And that is omnidirectional. So what that means is that wherever I am in the microphone, it's going to pick me up equally. So let's switch over to that. And now, wherever I move with this microphone, I should sound reasonably about the same. So as I come around the front, I'm addressing the front and I'm addressing the side, check, 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 and I'm continuing. And more or less all the way around, I'm gonna be about the same volume no matter where I am with the microphone, so long as I maintain my distance, but about the same. And then I come right back around the front and here we are again, omnidirectional. So all the way around. The last one, is a figure eight. And this is a really fun pattern. When I address the front face, I will have a pretty good pickup. As I come around the side, it will start to reject the sound of my voice, but then the back side should be about the same as the front. So I'll start here on the front side of the microphone and I come around the side and I come around the side and it's gonna start weeding me out and bringing me down. And then as I come back around the back end, it's going to pick me up reasonably about, about the same as, as if I were on the front. And then I come back around the side and it'll reject me some more. And then I'm back to the front again. The thing with microphones and polar patterns is that there's no, if, if you've never heard this before, let me be the first to tell you, there's no one microphone for everything. Um, there are some microphones that do a vast number of things really, really well, and you could almost use them on everything, but we have a lot of different microphones to choose from, and they have a lot of different applications. One of the things I like so much about this, and just FYI, I bought this ages ago. I bought it used. I am certainly not a representative of AKG or anything like that. Um, but I really, really appreciate this mic because of the polar patterns and the pads and the roll-off. It's a very flexible microphone. And so it, it can do a lot of things really, really well. A cardioid pattern is really, really great for some vocalists. It's also great for miking up a piano. Or if you're doing like an overhead on a drum kit, that cardioid pattern can work really, really well. The hypercardioid pattern on this microphone I find is really quite excellent when I'm doing backing vocals. I very frequently use this microphone to do backing vocals and I'll use it in that hypercardioid pattern. It's, it, it sounds really, really good there and I like the way it works with my voice. And in fact, I've used it for a number of different vocalists in that pattern. The omnidirectional pattern I don't use very frequently. This would be used for an area mic. And the question, one of the questions that came in was if you have like a, a choir, like a, a wide array of people, you might use an omnidirectional pattern for your choir if the microphones were way out in front of the choir. However, 
This is also going to pick up anything that's around, if, if you know the audience is making noise, or there's things like that, it's gonna pick that up too. So in other ways, is if you ever look at the way that they mic up orchestras, or they could mic up a choir as well, they'll either hang them from the ceiling, or they'll put them in the middle of the groups of people on stage. And that's a place where an omnidirectional pattern can work really, really well to pick up everything in the general vicinity of the microphone. Um, they can also work, the Om Omni pattern can work really well too if you wear in-ear monitors and you want to mix in a little bit of your stage sound and your crowd sound when you're, when you're sealed off in your in-ears. Having a couple microphones just on stage or around um, just brought very, very low into the mix can help you feel more connected with your ensemble and with your, your fans. Finally, the figure eight pattern works really well if you were gonna use this microphone two people at a time or record two guitars at once. Now it's all gonna go to the same track. It's not like it doesn't create two separate tracks, but they would both be blended onto that one track based upon your playing and your singing and things like that. Also, that figure eight pattern is very, very good for a mid-side guitar miking application. In that application, you take a cardioid mic and you face it, and you put a microphone like this in the figure eight pattern with the diaphragms pointing perpendicular to where you are. You bring those into your DAW, you copy the track with the figure eight pickup mic pattern on it, um, phase invert one of those channels, pan them left and right a little bit, and then as you bring that cardioid, the other mic that you are facing, as you bring that up in the mix, it really broadens the sound of the acoustic guitar, makes it a very, very compelling sound to the instrument. Uh, and, and I can do another video specifically on that if, if you want. Just leave me a comment in the comment section or on Twitter and, and I'll happily do that. But right now, that is an explanation of the polar patterns. Um, hopefully the diagrams and pictures were helpful. Hopefully the shots of the mic were helpful too. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask. Leave them in the comments. Find me on Twitter at JT Rolka. Great question, love talking about gear. Uh, thank you for watching. Take really good care of your voices. Take really good care of your microphones too. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.